Hi, this is your host, Kristen Howe, and I would like to welcome you to our very special call with today's guest, Joshua Bloom. Joshua is an internationally acclaimed and trusted authority on quantum healing, and he's the executive producer of the film, The Ultimate Answer is Inside. He's the author of How to Heal Yourself Instantly, The 100% Attraction Formula, and Beyond the Ultimate Answer audio programs. He was featured on the front page of the Washington Post as one of the first success coaches ever to be featured in the mainstream media and for the past 12 years as owner of the Quantum Healing Center in Virginia and New York City, he has developed and produced the Quantum Healing Certification Training Program called Come to the Edge. With his quantum energy transformation, Joshua has assisted his clients in completely releasing a long list of ailments, including fibromyalgia, pain, anxiety, depression, allergies, eczema, and rosacea, and that's just to name a few. So with the background of over 20 healing modalities, yes, you heard me correctly, 20 healing modalities, Joshua is a master success coach, neuro-linguistic programming master practitioner, certified hypnotherapist, certified practitioner of the emotional freedom techniques, and master teacher in many Reiki traditions, including his own being Reiki. Joshua's experience and passion is to help people create possibilities in their lives, and he believes that anything is possible and everyone has the power to live as who they are capable of becoming. I love that. And now on today's call, you will discover how to get out of your head and back into your body, how to be the cause rather than the effect in your life, how to create new possibilities in your life instantly, how to release your stress in less than a minute, how to release a traumatic event instantly, how releasing stored energy at the cellular level of your body can create unlimited possibilities. I love that. So, Joshua, I I can't wait to jump in because I know you're all about the experience. You and I were talking about this right before we, we got on here, and I can't wait to share you with everybody. So welcome to the call. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And and what I'd love to have you do, I mean, I've just shared quite a bit about you here, but I love hearing it in your own words, you know, a little bit of your story, maybe some of the turning points that you went through. Because here we are talking about Manifest Everything Now, which we all know starts from the inside out. We all know how important health is to that, which is a lot of what we're going to talk about with you. But if you could share a little bit of your story and how this all came to be for you, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. Well, many years ago, I was very interested in helping people. It really has been a passion for me to help people. I started out as a teacher. I I worked in daycare centers and as as a teacher in a classroom for uh, 12 years. And, And I started that when I was in college. So that was really a powerful thing for me to help people from that perspective. And I think as I moved forward in my life, I realized that teaching in the capacity that I was doing wasn't really where I wanted to be, and there was something else. There was something more. So through my journeys um, in my life and, and my experiences, I have done so many different kinds of things, from being a professional singer to helping people learn how to use their computer to working at uh, fast food places and all sorts of types of jobs I've had. And I used my creativity in my life to create all sorts of products. Like I sold the children's music when I made the music for kids. And I realized at some point that what really was meaningful to me was helping people. And then I didn't realize that who really needed help was myself. I did not realize that I needed help until I started to fall apart. When I mean fall apart, I mean that I was quite functional as a person, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, I wasn't functional. I was feeling so much fear, and it was very difficult for me to, I guess, to function and to live my life like a like you might call a normal person. <laughs> It was very, very scary for me because it wasn't really, uh, wasn't really living my life as I wanted to, but I didn't know how to fix this problem. And you know, most of us look at our problems in that way, that they need to be fixed. And boy, did I feel I needed to be fixed because 
I was, you know, at times I thought that I was going absolutely crazy. You know, was I really, was I okay or was I not okay? Uh, I wasn't sure. I, I really wasn't sure. I had difficulties with so many different things, especially with fear. Um, I got so scared that I couldn't stay alone at home by myself. And in doing so, I had to go and get a job outside of my house because, I, because I'd be alone all day. And that wasn't going to work for me. So I had to get a job outside the house. And what I did was I went to a hypnosis center and I started to work there. And the interesting thing was, even though I was a mess, I focused my energy on helping other people who came into the hypnosis center. So my focus wasn't always on me and my problem. It was me helping other people discover how to handle their problems, which I thought was really great because when we, when we sit and dwell on what's going on with ourselves, it tends to get worse. You know, whatever you focus on, you get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in that situation for me, I was able to help so many different people. And one of my first clients there was a woman who had fibromyalgia. And in just four minutes, I was able to help her release the fibromyalgia right then and there. And it was very surprising to me. But it was so powerful because I, I never did anything like that before. And then another client that I had, she was having difficulty finding a job. And I did one simple process with her. And she had a job the next day. Um, she was able to let go of what was holding her back from allowing that job to come into her life. And I realized through working with other people that not only was I able to help them, but what I was considering was possible was more possible than I thought it was because I thought my problem was impossible to fix. I thought that I was just going to live that way for the rest of my life and there was no out. And I was wrong because, I mean, when people come to you with mainly incurable issues, uh, whether that be cancer or fibromyalgia or migraine headaches, or head injuries, or, or all kinds of other problems, and they go away. And I'm sitting there saying, okay, I just, I'm just scared. <laughs> I'm just scared. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Mm -hmm. So it really gave me some perspective as I worked at that center. And I left that center and opened up my own center called the Quantum Healing Center. And that was really a stepping point for me because it was, it was a, an ability to now – be able to create something new and not be stuck in my fear anymore. Because I had fear to a really great extent. I mean, like I said, I was, I was scared to be alone. I had to stop driving, at least for long, long drives, because I had to be alone to do that. <laughs> right. So a lot of these things uh, now have changed, and I'm living my life quite differently. And it's really powerful when you can, even if you can't believe because I couldn't believe at the time that I could change the understanding that anything is possible. It really is. It really is possible to make a change at a deep level and allow it to be lasting and permanent. So I'm really excited about what I've been able to achieve for myself. But in doing so, I've been able to really understand healing from a very different point of view than somebody who's learned from a book or has or learned from maybe even classes because I was my own guinea pig in my own personal situation. When things weren't going well, I had to find a solution for that, and I did. And those solutions came from many times me helping someone else and really, well, that works for them. Maybe that would work for me. Mm. And so after, the, after years and years of honing my quantum understanding, I was able to then create many processes and many different ways to have healing happen just about instantly, if not instantly, most of the time. Wow. And that's really a profound experience because I was, if you think about it, I was in a, a situation where I felt nothing would change. And now I have an understanding that things could actually change now. Mm. 
Yeah, see, that's why I'm so excited about having you here, because I know that there are a lot of people listening who they feel that way. They feel like, oh, you know, is anything ever going to change? Is it even possible? So I, I love your outlook. I'm just so excited about that. Now, talk to me about this, because you you talk about getting out of your head, which is so important, and back into your body. Can you Can you talk more about that? Absolutely. You know, the way that we've been conditioned is all about thinking from the intellectual point of view. As soon as we're capable of doing it, we're in school and we are praised by parents and teachers for all the things we can do. And if we do something in other ways that's not as intellectual, Although that might be looked upon as, oh, isn't that nice and isn't that great? It's not the same praise that we get when we have, when we learned how to read maybe, or when we have learned how to do math specifically, or we've, we've hopped up a different grade level, or we've done something that got us a higher grade. Those things are much more, I guess, praised. Uh, much more praised and said, wow, you, you did a good job here. But when we do things that aren't as intellectual, well, you can't do that for a living. At least that's sort of what parents have told their children for years. You know, if you want to be a dancer or a singer or if you want to um, do something that's very creative, well, you can do that, but you really need a real job first, and then you can have that as a hobby. And most of us are told by our parents that we have to live what they think is possible, what they want for us. And some parents are very specific. I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be a lawyer. I want you to be this or that. And they know what they want their children to be. But what about the person who's growing up about their own personal choice and who they get to be? Mm. So what's considered to be valuable and what will help us survive in our economy and in our life through the years is very interesting because parents have their own idea of what we should do, and we might have our idea, and depending on our relationship with that parent, we either feel we can or we can't do the things that we want to do in our life. Yeah, that's such a huge thing, and I think you're right. You know, it's it, we are – sort of rewarded for the brain things. And in terms of manifestation, why is getting back in your body so absolutely essential, or is it? Well, as I was mentioning before about the idea that we're praised for all these things that are intellectual, we are conditioned now to think that way all the time, almost to a fault, or maybe even to a fault. We We've, we lessen the amount of intuitive things that we do. We lessen the amount of creative things that we do because it's important or we get praised for being in our head. You know, even my father, who I, who I think was a very open father, would say to me things like, think before you act. Are you paying attention, Joshua? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, where does that bring me as a child? into my head. I'm getting praised and having comments made that make me say, I've got to be a good thinker. And if I'm not a good thinker, you know, the belief is I'm not going to make it in the world. I'm not going to be able to survive. I'm not going to get a good job and, and so on and so forth. And, and this is not just me, but lots of people have experienced the same experience. So being in the body is something we've lost. We've been able to do it when we were born. We were born, we were able to be in the body, and, you know, babies, if you see a baby, they're very open. You know, we start out our life very open, and then we spend the rest of our life closing. Hmm. And so this is where quantum comes in. It's so important to really get back what we have lost. We lost the ability to be in our body and to open because we've been taught to close everything down in the body except for the intellect. Mm -hmm. That we people want open. They want to have that ability for everyone. So everyone has this ability to think, but we don't have the ability to feel. 
And if we have the ability to feel, sometimes it's overdramatic. So, for example, if we're feeling anxious, well, that's really big. But then there are times people can't feel at all, and we call that lockdown. And either way, it's not as useful, is it? It's not useful to have your emotions so big that you can't deal with them or not be able to feel at all and not know what you're feeling. Right. So we've locked down and closed up a lot of the experiences in the body that actually help us with transformation, evolution, and manifesting. Without opening up, none of those things are going to happen. You have to be able to be in your body and out of your head. Let's look at it this way. If you're in your head, who's in charge is your ego. (laughs) Who's in charge is your thinking. Now, most of us say, well, I don't like the thoughts that I have. So if we have thoughts that we don't like and we're in the head, we're in the ego, we're going to have those thoughts run like, like a computer program runs all the time. It just runs and runs and runs. The problem with that is it doesn't shut off. There are people that tell me, Joshua, I can't sleep at night because my head doesn't turn off. Because we've given the mind all of this power over us. And we think, because of our conditioning, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to give our mind all this power because that's going to be successful. That's going to get me the job. That's going to find me the life with that fairy tale ending. Hmm. It doesn't, but that's what we believe. <laughs> and with that belief that we have, we feel stuck. We're like, wait a second. I did everything my parents said to do. I did everything that my boss said to do. I did everything that I was supposed to do. And now I can't manage my life because I'm, I'm so in my head and I can't get out. And mm-hmm. now what? But that's but I was taught to do it this way because that was what was successful. The neat thing is that it's not very difficult to shift this. It's not difficult to say, wait a second. If being in my head is not working, I can do something else. I don't have to continue to be in my head. I don't have to continue to be victim of my thoughts. I don't have to be victim of my ego either. I have a choice to do it differently. Even though that wasn't what I was taught because we were all taught to be in our head and we can change. And it's not difficult because everything that I do really is very easy. And that's the magic of this, is that if you can do something that's so simple but gives you profound results, you would want to do it. Because if it's simple, A, everybody could do it. And if everyone can do it, it makes you want to do it more. Mm -hmm. And now we can get to a place where we can manifest, transform, and create the life that we just want to live. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you have simple experiences. I think that's that's such a key because if it's hard and it's, you know, it takes so long and all, it's just, you know, people won't do it even if they want to. Speaking of simple, you have, is it a, a stress, like there's a way to release stress within a minute? Am I, did I read that correctly? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> there's a really easy thing we can do to create a stress free experience to create the experience where your stress goes away and it's a very simple thing to experience because it doesn't have many steps there's is it we're going to work with our breathing a little bit here the first thing we're going to do is i'm going to teach you how to breathe and here's how you do it you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth really hard like blowing out a candle and we're going to do five of those okay Sort of like blowing out the candle. You can do five of those. And then after that, we're going to do five breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And the reason that we do it in through the nose and out through the mouth is because it strengthens our meridian system with that breath. And whenever you strengthen your meridian system, not only does it give you confidence, but it balances out your system. Mm. And so this is, that's a good breath to do. So both of those breaths together will release stress. And then we're going to have a hand position that goes with that, and that will be it. It'll take us less than a minute to do it. Are you ready? Uh, Yes. Okay, great. So you're going to take one hand and put it at your backside. 
just so that's where you want your attention to be. That's sort of a reminder. I want my attention to be at the base of the spine. This is where the tailbone is. So just put one hand at your backside at the base of your spine. The other hand, you're going to take your middle finger. And the reason that we use a middle finger is it has the most energy in that finger. Out of all of your fingers, it's the finger that has the most energy. So you're going to take that finger and put it right on your third eye. And you're going to remember that your attention is not to be on your third eye, but all the way down at the base of your spine where your other hand is. So just focus at the base of your spine, and we're going to do the breathing. We're going to do those candle breaths. Let's do the five candle breaths, blowing out a candle real fast. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Now in through the nose, out through the mouth. One, two, three, four, last one, five. Release your finger from your third eye, and then just release your hand from the base of your spine. You should notice that you feel different. More grounded, more open. What do you notice? Much, yeah, much more open. Wow, really, really centered. Yeah, and then the stress that was probably on the top from, you know, day-to-day -day activities and everything that we're doing, it, it seems lighter so that your, your chest might feel a little lighter, your stomach might feel a little lighter, feeling like it's just free in a sense of what you, were, what you may have been holding on to or feeling. It just lets it go. It doesn't matter if it's a huge stress, if you're freaking out, or if it's a small stress. This is something we can do a million times in the day if we need to. Absolutely. Well, you can't overdo this exercise. It's really easy to do, and it's really a powerful exercise because of the way that I've taken you through it. It gives you a very large response in a very positive way, and we might call it moving into a growth place. Because either we're in growth or protection, if you, if, you've, if you understand the work of Dr. Bruce Lipton, he says that we're either in a growth or a protection place. And if we're in growth, we can grow and we're growing. And if we're in protection, we're shutting down and closing down and really going backwards in our life. And to be honest with you, most of us are going backwards in our life because we're all mostly in protection. So when we start to move in the growth place, not only does that help with manifestation, because when you're growing, you're going to grow in many ways, manifestation being only one of those ways. Right. So it's so cool to be able to get your body into a growth place in a minute. I mean, most of the time we're anxious or we're not feeling well or we're not at our best or whatever it is that day, because, you know, it may change from day to day anyway. And we know that we have one thing that we can do that's very easy, that takes just about a minute, and we can feel better. And what's even better is, you know, in the program that we're going to talk about later, there's something called the stress eliminator. And that also is a, is a process that eliminates your stress. It just takes an extra minute. It's two minutes. And both of these together can really make huge, dramatic changes not just release your stress in the moment, but permanently. Wow. So we can live stress-free lives if we choose to. The key is knowing how to get there. And the stress eliminator, as well as the exercise we just did, really open the door to that possibility of living a different life. If you're stressed or if you're feeling fear, you move through your life very differently. Then if you're yeah, not. that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now I it's know something from personal experience. <laughs> hey, right, <laughs> right. See, he's not guessing at this, everybody. This is absolute. You know, I, I love that you say that because I say that all the time too. That you were the your own guinea pig. I think that's that's great. Now, you and I were also talking about how important, and I think everybody listening would agree, uh, confidence is to manifestation. It's, you know, confidence is important to your health. It's important to absolutely everything. And I know that you said you have an experience that really is a confidence booster. Is that something that you'd be willing to share with us? Absolutely. You know, confidence is one of those things that we lose mm -hmm. when we're in our head a lot. 
And the reason is, is because we find ways, or our, actually our brain finds ways to show you how not so good you are. Hmm. So when something happens that's not exactly what you thought it should be, we say to ourselves, oh, well, that's not very good. And then something else happens, you know, 10 minutes later or even sooner than that, and we say another comment about how not great that was. And then we start associating that with ourselves. Oh, so all these not so good things are happening. And look, the, the, the main person that's involved in this is me. I'm the common denominator. So therefore, it must be me that's not good. And we start to associate things very quickly. It really only takes one really good time. It doesn't even have to be multiple. It could just be one really good time of beating up on yourself. And we can lose confidence so quickly, even if it's not true. Even if the thing that we think has happened is true and it's not, we associate it and say, oh, you know, I must not be good at that, or I'm not so good at this, or I'm not a not a good person even, or I keep attracting these things into my life and I have a problem. You know, we keep telling ourselves these things over and over again. In a sense, we're hypnotizing ourselves to believe something that is probably not even true. Mm. So confidence is really all about choosing to know that you have the capability. We all have capabilities to do lots of different things. You know, I grew up understanding that I had a learning disability all through my childhood. You can understand how that might be a, a confidence deflator. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> all my life, I grew up thinking I have a problem. You know, and I had to go to special schools and I had to do special tutoring and I had to do all sorts of special things because Joshua isn't good enough. And that wasn't the message my parents gave me. They didn't give me that at all. Their message was I'm great and I'm fantastic. But that's not what I saw. I saw that I had to go to special schools and do special things and get special tutoring and get extra help and, and, and all sorts of things all throughout, even through college. Mm. And it wasn't until after college that I realized that I don't have a learning disability. I don't have a problem. And that we all learn differently. And, you know, if I learn the way that I choose to learn rather than the way the teacher wants me to learn, yeah. I can learn faster than anyone. Hmm. Because I understand how I learn, and it isn't the way that school is taught. And I didn't figure that out until after school was over. I wish I had to learn it earlier, but that is the way it goes. Everybody has a learning style, a way of learning that works for them. But not every teacher teaches in every style. Teachers right. teach the way they teach, and then if you can't learn it, that's your problem. True. So we get stuck in, in this understanding that we're not good enough, and we think, oh, it's me because I'm not learning this or I'm not doing this. And it may not be true. It just may be a different learning style. Hmm. And this happens to lots of kids who've gone to school. They have been told that they have a learning disability or ADD or whatever you want to call it. And they feel because of all what they see that they are inadequate, not good enough, can't get there. And, you know, I had to look back on my life to look at the, th the things that I was capable of doing to remind myself that, no, I'm not a person with a problem. I started to realize there's no learning disability here. I just don't fit in to the, to the model in which everyone's put me into. Mm -hmm. I just work differently. But it's not just me that works differently. We all do. We all have our own way. Nobody likes to work the way somebody else works. We like to work the way we like to work. Right. I mean, who likes it when the boss says, you know, you need to you need to do it this way. That's the way I want you to work it. And we're like, I don't want to do it that way. That's, that's sure. not easy for me. And this is where people have that disconnect. The thing is, is that we associate it and so that we feel that we're the problem. And once we get onto that bandwagon, we're in trouble. Right. So, Getting out of that place is to realize that confidence is an energy. Confidence is an energy. And that's exciting. 
Because if confidence is an energy, all you want to do is bring up that energy from within you and to use that energy in any situation. Because whether or not you believe the situation is going to be good or bad doesn't matter. Because everything follows your energy. Energy always leads. So if you can change your energy, then you can always be confident with whatever you do. So let me show you this exercise. It's really neat. But it does a lot more than just give you confidence. It also aligns your spine and gets your posture corrected in just uh, a minute or two. It's wow. really, really powerful and really, really easy. And the key of this exercise is awareness. It's putting your awareness, similar to what we did before, we put our awareness at the base of our spine, and we did some breathing, right? Uh -huh. In this case, we're going to put our awareness under our feet, hmm. and we're going to keep that awareness right under the feet, sort of like between the floor where you're standing. So you're going to want to stand up for this exercise because it works better if you're standing up because okay. your posture, you can feel the posture change when you're standing. So if you're standing up, you're going to put your attention under your feet and you're going to feel the space between the floor and your feet. And that's where your attention is going to be. And this attention, where your attention is there, is going to actually connect to a chakra under your feet called the Earth Star Chakra. And the Earth Star Chakra actually is about alignment. And it aligns your bones, and it also helps with safety security issues, but it also helps with confidence. So if you're standing here with your attention under your feet, and what you're going to do is you're just going to just stand there and don't do anything about your posture. Just notice how it changes because it will automatically change as long as you're keeping your awareness under your feet. And just breathe into the nose and out through your mouth. Let's do like 10 breaths. That's one. Two. Three. Five. You should start to feel that your posture is changing already. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And last one. Ten. And you probably will notice that you feel taller. I do. <laughs> I feel like a foot taller. Yeah. It really lifts your energy. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it aligns your spine. So actually you are getting taller because you're not crunching down on your bones anymore. You actually opened up that space in the body and it actually has moved the bone in your body. You also, if you take a step or walk a, like a forward or backward, either way, you'll notice that it feels different than it did before you did the exercise. Yep. That you have a different sense of ground. You have a different stance, even. Your shoulders probably fell back and went down, and your posture just changes instantly. The interesting thing is that I remember many years back, I wanted to change my posture because I looked at Lots of people who had bad posture, and I figured I don't want bad posture as an adult because as you get older and you have bad posture, it could lead to not so good things. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to change my posture. This is so important to me. So I practiced every day changing my posture, and I have to say I couldn't do it. <laughs> I wasn't very successful at changing my posture. I really wanted to change my posture, but I would forget. So I would say, oh, I was supposed to change my posture today and practice. Okay, I'll do it now. And and it just became a chore. Mm. When I understood how the energy is the leader and the energy is going to lead you to to shift your energy and shift 
even your bones in your body so that you can almost really get a chiropractic adjustment just by this exercise alone. You can feel how powerful it is. Now, I used to go to a chiropractor three or four times a week because my bones would move out of alignment. Now, remember, I was dealing with a lot of safety security issues, and therefore my bones were going to move out of alignment because that's, that connects. Right. Um, safety security issues, usually people who have them will have to go ahead and go to the chiropractor all the time. However, since I understood this concept, I haven't gone to the chiropractor. I haven't needed to. My posture has been perfect all the time with no effort. If I want great posture, I put my attention under my feet and I breathe 10 breaths and I go, out throughout, I go throughout the rest of my day and enjoy my life. And if I feel like my posture has shifted, I just do that again. It takes very little time. It's really easy to do. Wow. That's exciting. And it's funny because this is the stuff that you don't even realize is blocking you from, you know, creating the, the life that you want. These are those those things that sort of go not spoken about. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Well, I feel, I feel like we don't learn the tools. We don't have these tools. These are very simple things to do, and we don't have the tools because we're thinking that there is a strategy or a step-by-step -step thing that you have to figure out, or it's going to be hard, or it's going to be difficult, and we want to be able to understand it. You know, when I say you can just put your attention under your feet and you can actually move the bone in your body, until you experience it, it doesn't seem like that would be real. <laughs> right. Like, what do you mean that would work? You know, yeah, it works, and it's brilliant. I can't tell you how many clients call me and say, ever since you taught me that exercise, Joshua, where I could align my body by putting my attention under my feet, I have a perfect posture. I get emails about it all the time because it is such a simple exercise, and it feels so good, it makes you want to do it. Whereas trying to adjust your posture itself, it doesn't feel good because you're like, oh, my shoulders are wrong, my back is wrong, my okay, I've got to put my my tailbone underneath underneath and pull my pelvis out and do all this adjusting, and right. and then we got to remember to stay here, and then we look like a robot, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't really work effectively because it's working at the level of strategy. And when we work at the level of strategy, it's a very low level of change. So you have to keep working at it. But this is working at the level of energy. Now, when you work at the level of energy and you allow yourself to get into this way of being, it's not that the strategy got you here. It's that you've entered a way of being and it's easy to stay because it's a way of being, not a strategy. Right. I love that. You know, you said that right before we jumped on the call, that it's the way of being. It's not a strategy. It's an experience. And I, and I think that's so powerful. And I think that's really, you know, kind of how we should be looking at our lives. Um, so I, I, I love that. I think that's amazing. Now, with the people you work with consistently, can you share any of the stories of, you know, I know there's some great transformations happening. Can you share some of those stories with us? Sure. Just to say something based on what you just said. It's so interesting how we're all out there looking for the quick fix. Mm. And believe you me, I was looking for the quick fix too. And when we look at the quick fix from a strategy point of view, it takes a long time. Look at anything that deals with the strategy. Look at the weight loss centers that are popping up everywhere all around the world. And people jump from one strategy to the next strategy of weight loss. Same things happen with gyms, by the way. Everybody wants to go to lose weight by going to a gym. They do it for a month or whatever, and then they, they pay for the whole year, and they don't go for the rest of the year. All these strategy-based experiences, we can't keep them up because no one's going to do that forever. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. But when you work from the experience of beingness, then we realize that things can shift very, very quickly. So we're sort of working on the wrong side of the spectrum when we work at the level of strategy. And that's what I have to offer, and that's what I share, is that the quick fix isn't what you think is going to fix it. <laughs> right. Because it, it, working with energy will give you an opportunity to make deep changes, 
but you may not see it from your conditioning and your understanding of how you think things might work. You, you might not think that an energy kind of solution would work because it's not what we've been taught. We've all been taught that you need to take a medication or you need to uh, do a protocol or whatever it is. And the key is, is that we don't have to. We can play and we can discover and we can learn about ourselves. You know, if people go to counseling to deal with an issue, when they go to counseling, it's all about understanding. They want to understand why you're a mess. Uh-huh. And the problem with that is all the focus is on being a mess and why you're that way. Right. And you, you could do that for 10 to 20 years and realize, now I know why I was a mess. But it doesn't <laughs> change the mess. Mm-hmm. It doesn't try to change the mess. It's just, okay, so I've been able to talk to someone about the mess, and now I know more about why I'm that mess. But if we don't have the shift, the evolution from – this is what I was like when I was a mess, and here's who I am now as, as an evolved person, as a person who no longer requires those problems. That's an evolution, not a quick fix. But evolution actually appears like it's a quick fix because it happens so fast. Right. There was a woman who I, I was working with who wanted to lose weight, and She came to see me for other reasons, and she really didn't want to work on the weight loss specifically. She wanted to work on her relationship. But it was obvious that I could see that she could lose some. She was was obese. So we never really talked about her losing weight at all. We talked about her relationship, and we worked on her relationship. And I worked with her at a higher level of energy, of healing. Instead of working at strategy about what are we going to do about the relationship, what are the specific things, we worked at the level of possibility. What would be possible for her in her relationship? What would be possible for her in her life? And what else could she want or achieve or create? And what was interesting was that she realized in her, by, on her own in this experience that The relationship that she was in wasn't the relationship she wanted. And although that was a letting go, that was a, that was a difficult situation for her, a time for her, because she realized it's not the relationship I want to fix, um, or change. What she wanted to change was she wanted to be who she wants to be. Right. And when she realized that, she let go of the relationship. And she felt very good about it. I I think her partner wasn't so thrilled, but she felt very good about the change. And every time she would come to see me, she would be thinner. And I'm talking about like three or four days. It wasn't like even a week. I would see that like sheets were leaving her body of weight. She was getting thinner and thinner. And I said, every time I see you, you look thinner. And she says, absolutely. She says, I'm not even trying to lose weight, Joshua. Uh, I'm just being who I know I can be. And by being who she knew she could be, she was able to, without a strategy, without trying to figure it out or fixing the problem, she just strived to be more of who she can be. And by doing so, she lost weight and it was effortless. There wasn't anything to do. There was no diets to follow. It was all about her being her. Wow. Wow. Really, really powerful. Yeah, and so powerful. Sometimes we look into our life and we don't realize um, that there are things in our life that we want to change or we want to take them out of our life. Um, I never thought that she was going to choose to get rid of the relationship she was in because that's why she came. She came to enhance her relationship, and I was in support of helping her work on that relationship. But as we worked together, she realized that wasn't what it was. It, and it rarely is what it is. We think it's one thing and it's always another thing. It never is what it is. Of she course. Can, for the relationship, she really could, couldn't tell herself the truth. She couldn't tell herself the truth until she evolved, until she moved 
some energy in her body. And she evolved and she realized this is not the relationship I want. And when she realized that, she was able to be herself again. Yeah. And not all, not always is it losing a relationship. That was that situation. That's not that's not how quantum works. It's not you have to lose something in order to get something. Um, you know, when I work with that lady who had fibromyalgia, she lost nothing. She just basically chose um, to release the fibromyalgia, and it was gone. Wow. So that was pretty powerful. There was a lady that came in. Uh, many years ago, who had migraine headaches. What was interesting about her situation is she had many other problems, but all she talked to me about was migraine headaches. <laughs> she said, if my migraines could stop, I would feel better about living my life. Huh. And I said, did you want to work on anything else? She said, Joshua, if you can stop the migraine headaches, that would be it. That's what I want. So I said, okay. So she comes in for the first session. And I didn't realize this in the first session that I spoke with her. I don't, I don't know why, but um, she said, I can't sit down because the base of my spine hurts so badly. Hmm. So I thought that was interesting because in my initial conversation with her, she didn't mention that the base of her spine hurt. She didn't mention, I did, she didn't, it didn't look like she was moving around in the chair even. Uh, maybe this was just a bad day, a, a day where that pain hurt quite a bit. And she said most of the time it hurts, and usually she'd have to park. When she drives the car, she'd have to park far away because it hurts so much that she screams when she gets out the car. And so I asked her if she would like to lay on the couch. I had a couch in my office, and she said that would be much better. So she lay on the couch, and she's she's laying, and she's and she's relaxing. And in that one session, we got the pain to go from a 10 all the way down to a 1. So after the session, she was able to sit in a regular chair that wasn't cushioned. It was sort of like one of those cheap chairs. And right. she was able to sit on that chair for a half an hour. She says, I don't want to get off this chair. She says, I can sit on this chair. And I, I, she says, I, I don't know when I've sat on a chair like this. And then I remembered that the reason she probably wasn't in pain the first time, or at least appeared to be in pain the first time I met her, was that there was a different chair. It was a very cushy chair. So she probably positioned herself well and was okay for that period of time. But in this case, in that one session, we were able to get her pain to, to go down and eventually went away in, by the next session. So when she left for that first session, I went to give her a hug because I'm a very huggy, lovey kind of person. So I went to give her a hug, and she put her hand out to block me from hugging her. And she was obviously saying, you need to shake my hand. <laughs> right. And something went off in my in my experience in my body, and I realized, ah, there's much more going on here than migraine headaches. And if we look at migraine headaches, they're about identity. Mm. Who is this person becoming? And when we look at the idea of not being able to give someone a hug or not feeling comfortable with that, that's a disconnect from spirituality. And so she was feeling quite disconnected, and I realized that. So I said, okay, and I just shook her hand, and I said, in my mind, we'll deal with that in the next session. So she came in for the second session, and we're now working on the migraine headaches. And we were able to get those migraine headaches to go down, and that was great. We also did a third session, and we were working on the migraine headaches just the same. And the next time she came in was the fourth time she came in. She gave me a hug when she left, and... She said, my eczema is gone. Wow. Now, I didn't know she had eczema. <laughs> she didn't tell me she had eczema. But skin issues are also a spirituality disconnect. So when we're disconnected from spirituality, but now she's given me a hug. I, she, she offered one to me. I was I almost fell on the floor. She said, you've changed my life. And she said, Joshua, I just came back from the doctor. And I told my doctor I didn't have eczema anymore, and he didn't believe me. So he said, let me come to the examining room. I need to, I need to see. So they went to the examining room and she took off her clothes and she didn't have eczema. And he says, put your clothes back on. And he walked out the room. And he just thought that was impossible. He said, I don't know what you did. Eczema is an incurable illness. I don't know. He said, he knew it was there before. Right. And it went. So with quantum, what happens is that we're processing 
the energy in the body, in the cells of the body, in the little packets of energy that this energy is stored in. And when we process the information, we don't even know it's there. We just respond. You know, in our way of thinking, we look at it as a habit or a pattern is a good word. So we look at this as a pattern and we think, well, how did I create that pattern? Well, most of the time, the patterns that we have in our life don't relate in any way to what the symptom is. So like when I said before, it never is what it is. It's because it's invisible what created it. You can't see that anymore. All you see now is the problem, and we can't trace it back because there's, there's no content there. Hmm. What there is, though, is there's energy. So right. when we move the energy in the cells of the body that created the problem, the problem just vanishes. It goes away. Sure. But I would say the same thing happens for manifestation. That when you're wanting to manifest something, you want to create and bring something new into your life, you're only going to be able to attract at the level of frequency that you're living at. Hmm. If you're sad, depressed, upset, mad, whatever it is, you're living at a lower frequency because your energy is low. Right. You just will only be able to attract at that level. But when you change the level of frequency, so let's say you took what you're feeling in the moment and changed and processed it, it lifts your energy frequency, but not just for the moment, but permanently. You know, we do lots of things. We do meditation sometimes. We can do toning or chanting. Some people like to play with the Tibetan bowl. There's so many different things that we can use. Sound can change our frequency. Even yoga actually changes your frequency. So you engage yoga or one of those things I just mentioned, and our frequency goes up, and then what happens? It goes back down. Right. And so we might feel good for an hour or two, and then we're back to the drawing board. Oh, do you mean I've got to do an hour and 15 minutes of yoga to be able to feel that way again? It may not feel worth it. <laughs> right. You know, we got busy lives and we got things to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So it may not seem worth it to us to take all of that time to be able to create what we think should be a simple shift. But when we use quantum to change our frequency, it changes it permanently. So now when you release uh, that, that lower energy information, you're now just living in a higher energy, and that's permanent. You're always now at that energy frequency, and if you release more, you could be even at a higher frequency, and, and you can get higher and higher and higher and, and live your life in bliss if you so choose. Right. Yeah, see, that's why I'm so excited, and that's why I was excited about having you here, because I think this is the stuff that, that people really are wanting to hear about, is how can I not just do this for – you know, a minute or an hour, but how can I change my frequency permanently and continually raise that, that frequency or raise that vibration, so to speak. So and that's why I'm so excited and, you know, why I was so psyched to be able to have you on here. And I know that, that one of the things you did was put together a special offer for everybody listening. So go check this out because this is spot on exactly. If you're not manifesting what you want, you just said it perfectly, Joshua, you you're manifesting where your frequency is. So it's time to change the frequency. So simply click on the special offer button on this page. Joshua, can you let us know and sort of walk us through what we're going to find in that special offer? Yes. Before I do that, would it be okay if I take you through one more exercise? A quick one? Uh, sure. Actually, what I would suggest is tell us what we're going to find there, and then let's. why don't we end the call with you taking us through it next Oh, week. that sounds like a beautiful idea. Perfect. Okay. So let me walk you through this program. I have to say that I made this program really from my heart. I really wanted to make a program that would give you everything. This program is called the 100% Health and Wellness Manifester. Whether you want to manifest good health or release a trauma or whether you want to simply manifest and bring new things into your life, well, this program will do it. It's very simple and you've experienced the very simple things we've done on this call here today. and. This is what we do in this program, but at a much deeper level. So I'm going to teach you how this all works from the beginning to the end so you realize the 
magnitude of transformation that's possible for you, and you'll also know how to do it. I mean, that's a key thing, being able to have the experience where things actually change in a very simple way. You won't have to work hard to get to those changes because I don't believe you have to work hard to get there. Working smart's good, but working hard isn't necessary. So this training is called Getting Your Life Back Now Through the Quantum World of Possibilities. And you'll learn about quantum energy transformation, how it works. You'll learn to manifest anything without even trying. There's one of my students, and she said to me, Joshua, I would never have believed what I'm experiencing now with you. If you would have told me, I had to experience it for myself to realize what was possible because we're all holding ourselves back. And now she realizes she can have more than she could ever imagine. That's not how she was when she first started, but through the training, she was able to discover that. This program will also help you learn to take your personal evolution to the next level. You're going to become the next level of you. It will also teach you how to eliminate trauma. If you have a trauma, a problem, an issue, it really will take care of that. So whether you want to manifest new things in your life or change some lower frequency experiences, some uh, difficult times that have happened in your life, and you want to just transform them, that live training alone will be huge for you. The second item is called Manifest Anything at the Blink of an Eye. And this is a video presentation. This video is so powerful because I'm sitting there sharing with you how manifestation actually works. We've been taught through many different types of movies, different books, and other means of learning how to manifest. And, and really, to be honest with you, most of that stuff doesn't work. I've tried it myself. And most people come to see me because it hasn't been working. And what I've learned through me being the guinea pig and working with thousands of clients, I've learned specifically how to allow manifestation to work and to have it be easy. It will help you stop the struggle and live the life of your dreams. It will help you uh, manif manifest anything easily. And it will help you learn to change your energy. You know, remember I said earlier that your energy is what's leading. If you don't change your energy, nothing's leading. If your mind is leading, then your ego is leading, and then you have no control. So this video will teach you how to change your energy so you can live quite differently. Like I said, these things are very simple to do. It's not like you'll be spending lots of time trying to do this. You'll do one little exercise, and it will just change your life. That's the, that's the key of this kind of work. The third item in audio training is called Discovering the Science of Quantum Manifestation. What's really exciting about this program is that Bruce Lipton, Bernie Siegel, Norm Shealy, James Oshman, Donna Eden, Henry Grayson, and many more people who are well-known are sharing with you, along with me, to teach you this information. It's great. You're going to really enjoy their comments. You know, I filmed a movie and produced a movie called The Ultimate Answer Movie, and I had lots of extra information to provide that I couldn't put in the movie. And it's in here. It's in this program, and it's powerful. It really is pretty amazing. The next item is called Holographic Manifestation. It's a guided connection is what I call it. Guided connections are different than meditations. You see, a meditation typically has to do with relaxing and sort of going up and out of your body into into the world of energy, which people think is up and outside of their body. A guided connection is pulling you down into your body and allowing you to, to, you to use your body as your connection to the energy and to your spirituality and to your identity. And because it's sort of like the main circuit breaker for all of those areas, it really works very quickly. I remember when I worked in the hypnosis center, when I did a hypnosis session versus a guided connection, people changed instantly with the guided connection, but it took repetition over and over again for it to work with hypnosis. So you can see the magnitude of difference between a guided connection and even hypnosis, which hypnosis is really powerful, but a guided connection is instantly life-changing. I mean, that's the difference. Um, this, this program says, rather than feeling stuck, 
and not moving forward, allow this process to help you shift everything. And it will. It will help you create the life of your dreams from the inside out. And these guided connections are really powerful to do so. The next one is the guided connection called Transform Anything Now. Have you ever wanted to make a quick change in your life for transformation? This guided connection helps you do that easily. And that's a key. I don't like to do a lot of hard work or spend a lot of time healing myself. I want to live my life. I don't want to try to manifest all the time. I just want it to fall in my lap. This is what this program does. It teaches you how to delete or release or take out anything from your life that's not working, and you can shift it in the moment, in that guided connection. And then item number six is really powerful because it teaches you how to manifest money. We don't typically think of money as energy. And the point of view that this guided connection comes to you with is that money doesn't have the meaning that we necessarily put on money, but if money were energy, how would I attract more of that? as an energy, not as can I have it, do I deserve it, all of those you know, pitfalls that we get into about money. Realizing that if money is energy and what happens on the inside of me affects what happens on the outside of me, if I change something on the inside about money uh, and raise my energy frequency and open and ground, get into a really great strong place, but my signal to the universe is really strong, letting the universe know that I'm willing to accept money right now, you will find that money will come to you in all different ways without even trying. This program really just amplifies the amount of money you can attract into your life. And it can happen quite quickly because it's not about a strategy to get the money. It's really about working from the level of possibility. And when you are at the level of possibility, you're higher than a belief. See, our beliefs hold us back. So when we work higher than beliefs, then possibility, when it shifts as as an energy, actually changes your belief. And now you're no longer holding yourself back or being stuck. This guided connection does that. It sort of unstucks you and allows you to attract not just money, actually. It will help you attract anything. But this particular focus is on money because that's something that people really want to be able to do. They want to be able to attract money, but all the things that people are telling us to do are all strategies. They work at lower levels of, of change, and it takes a lot of work, and most of the time it doesn't work. This does work, and I know it works because I've used it myself, and so have many of my clients, and it really is powerful. There's a bonus. It's called Instantly Release Traumatic Events. What's neat about this is that you see me in front of an audience in just about every single one of them where I instantly help people make transformations happen for themselves. What's invaluable about this is that you will be able to use this video to understand transformation from a very deep place because you see everything. I have it filmed so that you can see what I'm doing, what the person I'm working with is doing. You can hear my explanation and how it happens. And you can see transformations happen right before your eyes. It is one of my favorite videos because people have been able to release their own traumas and problems just by watching. It's fabulous. Actually, if you're looking at the page, the woman in the picture there uh, yeah. was, a, was a woman who released her own traumas with me, and it was very, very powerful. She had huge anxiety that she felt would never, ever change. She had a panic attack in my office the very first time I met her. It was a very difficult situation for her, and instantly, in one session, we were able to handle that trauma, and she never had an anxiety attack again. And it's been wow. since the year 2000. So it's been quite a while since I worked with her, and she's still in a great place and hasn't had any anxiety attack since. So anything is possible here. Item number eight is really a special one for me because it's the stress eliminator, and I mentioned it earlier in the call. The stress eliminator is a process that I made 
when I realized that we live such stressful lives. And if you're feeling stressed, you can't manifest. Because if you're stressed, your energy frequency goes down. So what this does is it teaches you in two minutes to release your stress and it instantly takes it away. And if you like the exercise that we did on this particular call today, you will like this one even more because it's a deeper exercise. And not only can it release stress, but it will also release a trauma if you use it for that. It could be used for so many different purposes. You know, it's commonly known that 75% of all illness is caused by stress. So getting out of the stress, getting back into your body will help you create just about anything. And this one thing alone is life-changing. Item number nine uh, is called Affirmations Don't Work. Joshua shows you what does. <laughs> it's kind of funny because most people like affirmations. Most people think that affirmations work. But really they don't, and here's why. When you say an affirmation, two things happen. One is you feel good. The other is you feel bad. And here's why. If you say an affirmation, you are actually triggering yourself. You are pushing your button, so to speak. And you're doing so because you're saying something that you do not believe. If you believed it, why would you say it? <laughs> so you're saying something that you do not believe, but you would like to believe. <laughs> and the doubt starts to come up, and the energy of it starts to come up, and it really pushes our buttons. A quick story here. I, uh, there was a woman who was saying affirmations over and over, and she was feeling really great. And she was so excited to share with me how wonderful she is after saying affirmations all day long. So I was like, oh, that's cool. She did something. She felt good. It worked. I like when things work. And so I figured I'd call her on the next day to see how she was doing because, God, if she felt as great as she felt the, the day I spoke with her, if she's been continuing this affirmation process, she must feel even better. And I was right. When I called her, she felt so great. She said, Joshua, I can't even tell you, my life has changed. I am a brand new person. These affirmations are beyond what I ever expected. And I said, oh, wow, this is really great. So she did it for the th third day. Again, I call her and we're talking and she's feeling really great. So I called her on the fourth day. And I could tell just when she answered the phone and I could feel it. Her energy frequency was so low. It was as high as she was on the, on the other three days. She was as low this day. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, Joshua, I don't know. I've been doing these affirmations and even today I've been doing them. And now I can't even tell you, I can't even, I feel like I'm not even functional. And I realized in that moment what had happened. And in order for her to feel good, she had to suppress the bad feeling that the affirmations were giving her in order to feel good. So she continued to say these affirmations while suppressing the bad and feeling the good. But she wasn't releasing the bad. She was holding on to the bad because she was making it so that she couldn't feel it. When you build the pressure cooker in your body for four days, <laughs> it eventually pops. <clears throat> and so it popped for her, and she felt so depressed and so bad, not functional, as she said, and it was very difficult for her to to do anything. So I was able to work with her right then and there for about, I don't know, it was about five or six minutes, and we were able to shift from where she was to back, getting her sanity back again, and she felt really good when we were getting off the phone. But it changed my life to learn that affirmations give you both sides. It's not a one-sided deal here. You get the positive feeling and the negative feeling. When I have people say these positive affirmations when they're in their body, you can actually feel the negative thing come up because you're not hiding from it or suppressing it anymore. And so this particular program teaches you how to release the negative feeling underneath all these affirmations, not only will it bring in to alignment 
that affirmation for you. But you'll never have to use it again. You know how we say affirmations over and over and over again? You'll be able to use the affirmation once and make a huge change in that moment. The people that participated in this class that this, this is about really demonstrate for me how to use affirmations brilliantly. Hmm. Wow. Well, this is like so much stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's very exciting. So, you know, thank you. And everybody, one more time. If you haven't yet, just click on the special offer button on this page to see for yourself what an amazing package this is. You'll be glad you did. Definitely go check this out because this is, you know, if you've been stuck in the same sort of struggle, this is exactly what you need to go check it out. So, Joshua, we don't have much time left here at all, but I would love for you to take us through that one uh, final experience. Okay. So just taking a deep breath. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. And just soften your body. And if you can soften your body even more, could you? Just allow yourself to feel the softness as you breathe continuously in through your nose and out through your mouth. Softening and relaxing. Now, just imagine that your higher self is floating just above the top of your head. I want you to reach up and grab your higher self. Pull your higher self into your head. That's it. As it goes down into the crown chakra, right at the top of your head, feel it just oozing down, sliding down through the bones in your body. Feel that higher self moving down. You'll be able to feel it. It slides in quite nicely behind your eyes, passing your throat, your heart, your upper stomach, your lower stomach, allowing it to go down your body, passing the base of your spine, going down your legs, Sitting right into your body, all the way down, passing your knees, pulling in the higher self, all the way down into your feet. When your higher self is all the way in your feet, you're in your body. This is a deeper way of grounding. This is powerful. Just be. Feel the strength the power, and the openness. And just be. I love it. What a great way to end the call. Just, I want to leave everybody in the, the state of that experience. I think that's just the perfect way to do it. Thank you so much, Joshua. You've been fantastic. Your energy is amazing. And I know everybody got so much from this. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It was amazing. Thank you.